how to find listings, okay? List to last, there's actually a saying that says list to last. What that means is you get listings, you start building your pipeline, you make a name for yourself with listings, you're gonna be able to control your income, okay? So here's the problem. We have uh, a problem called low inventory and high interest rate, okay? What that means is, is it doesn't mean that the market's gonna crash, it doesn't mean it's doom and gloom. All it means is that a lot of sellers do not have to sell, okay? And buyers, um, buyers that wanna buy, wanna buy, but some buyers need to buy, but a lot of sellers don't need to buy. The solution is, is you need to find the motivator, okay? Every time you guys talk to someone, if they're not motivated on a scale from one to 10, if they're not like an eight to nine buyers or sellers, you guys be careful about wasting too much time on those people. A lot of people that you will waste your time are investors. A lot of you guys will get text messages that say, hey, um, I'm looking for realtors to help me with my investments. A lot of those are scammed, okay? Just know that investors will waste your time like crazy, okay? You've got to know who's motivated. And I like to ask the question, you know what? You know, um, Carmelo, we've, we've talked about a lot. It looks like you're motivated, but I just want to ask you a question. Like from, on a scale from one to 10, how motivated are you? And they're going to go, I'm an eight. And you're going to go, okay, great. Fantastic. Tell me more about that. Right. And then they're going to tell you, you know what, you know what, Tanya, I know I want to get the right price. Price is really important to me, but more than anything, I need to get closer to that. I need to get into that school district to get my kids started in school. Or if I actually don't sell my house for top dollar, that's not the biggest problem. The problem that I have is I'm not going to be able to start my job, okay? So you guys got to really think about how can I ask the question on how motivated they are. If they say, you know what, I'm a five, I'm just trying to figure out how much I can get. And if I don't sell, I'll stay here, okay? And then you got to ask questions and then what will happen, okay? So I have a formula called FCC. This is before you get the listing, okay? The thing is, is you got to find the listings first, okay? You got to find them, you got to figure out where to find them. We're going to go over all the places to find them, right? Open house, expires, FISBOs, door knocking, um, pregnant women, divorce, death, all those, okay? But the thing is, is when you find them, you got to know how to convert them, okay? How are you going to convert them and what tools are you going to use? The way that you convert them is one, you have to know the scripts these days. We are in a skills based market. Your buyers and sellers are looking for you to be competent and they're looking for you to be confident. Okay. And if you cannot talk about financing options, if you cannot talk about a two one buy down, if you cannot talk to them confidently about the market, you actually think that they're going to have confidence in you selling their house and negotiating on their behalf with a bulldog buyer's agent on the other side? Probably not, okay? So every one of you has scripts. And if you need scripts for listing scripts, listing pre-qualification scripts, ask me. If you need scripts for expired scripts and FISBO scripts, call me, okay? If you need um, door knocking scripts, call me. I'll give you the scripts, okay? So you guys need to know how to convert them. You need to know how to talk to them in person. A lot of you guys are talking to people behind the screens, right? You're talking to people through video, through messages, through Snapchat, through WhatsApp, through, through Marco Polo, through Facebook messengers, okay? But what we're not doing these days is we're not actually talking to people face-to-face, -face, getting in front of them, and really kind of feeling out where they're at and de developing that relationship with them. Okay. And here's what I want to tell you. If you want to convert listings, whether you have a referral or you have somebody call you on a listing or you have um, somebody uh, tell you, you know, uh, they give you a referral at the door, your job is to not go back and forth on text messages a hundred times. You guys got to close for the appointment. Okay. You got to get in front of them. And when you get in front of them, you have to close them, right? That's the last part of the FCC. You have to close them, okay? 
a lot of realtors do not think that they need to show up with a listing packet. They think everybody knows who I am. They know my brand. I sell lots of homes around here. I even own this farm. I'm going to tell you right now, I know people who own farms, their ego went to their, their, their head a little bit, right? They have literally lost farms to new agents because the new agents are hungry. They're out there. They're hustling. They got grit. They're getting in front of people. They're doing parties. They're, they're doing, um, doing things for their community. They're doing garage sales. They're doing trash pickups. They're giving them calendars for um, school drives, that kind of thing, right? You got to go in and close them with the script, okay? But you're not going to close them if you have not pre-qualified them well enough, right? If you don't know where they, want, where they are right now, where they want to go, if you don't know who else is involved in the transaction, okay? If you don't know their why and if you don't know their motivation, okay? you're not gonna be able to close them, okay? This is not the market, pre-COVID market or even post-COVID market, right? This isn't the market where everybody's like, oh my God, I got a 2% interest rate. I got tons of equity in my house, which I thought I was gonna stay in forever. I thought I was gonna die in this house, but I have so much equity in this house that my husband's forcing me to sell it, <laughs> right? And so I can go buy another house for 2% that I don't want, right? So this isn't the market where people are just playing Monopoly with their houses, right? This is the market where people are really thinking about their wealth. People are thinking about where they want to go. People are thinking about where am I going to build a home? Where am I going to create my peace? How am I going to build my wealth? Where am I going to create my memories? Okay. Back then in that market, it was very transactional. This market is very relational and very skill-based. Okay. So it's important that you find the listing. You got to convert the listings and you got to close the listings. Okay. Oh, going back to closing them. Okay. Converting them is closing them. So that's kind of the same thing. Find them, convert them right into a listing agreement. Closing them means going back to the skill based market. This means that you need to know how to keep the deal together. Okay. And when I say keep a deal together, you guys got to answer your phones. You guys got to answer your text messages, right? You guys got to stay composed and you can't be freaking out on every agent that calls you, okay? This market is so crazy that everyone's freaking out, right? The goal is you're going to see agents on each side. It's a little bit of a pissing contest, okay? But don't let your ego get involved, okay? Your job is to keep the deal together unless it makes sense for it to not be together, okay? At the end of the day, you want to close it. And you got to figure out how is this going to be a win-win for everybody. Sometimes, okay, and this could be a little controversial. Sometimes agents will give up a little bit of commission. Sometimes agents won't, okay? And I'm going to warn you right now, do not be giving up all your, your commission in the beginning. Want to know why? Because you might need to use your commission to negotiate, okay? You might need to use your commission to go thirds on the home repairs or to go thirds on, oh, the roof needs to be done. Oh, wow, we didn't think this termite inspection was going to come back so bad, right? You might need to use your commission at the end to clean out all the trash that the seller left that was supposed, they were supposed to take it, right? Your job is supposed to close the deal, okay? Keep it together, know your deadlines, work, and some of you have second jobs, right? Every single one of you should have a transaction coordinator and you should be working very closely, okay? So you got to close them. And then here's the thing, you can close them have a great relationship with them and ask them for referrals before you close them and develop a relationship with the agent on the other side and get paid, it's a win-win. Your job is to also be developing relationships on the other side because they might have a listing down the line. You might put, be putting a buyer into their listing. Got it? So a lot of times we think we're at war, okay? Oh my God, I got to get my client the best price, right? This agent's making me crazy. But that agent you're going to work with again. <laughs> A buyer and the seller, maybe not for years, right? Yes, you are. And hopefully they'll give you referrals. But I'm just telling you, don't be crazy in this market. There's too many crazy, incompetent agents that think everything's on fire, right? Everything can get worked out. All right. Enough of that. Okay. The next one here, farming. Okay. Farming, farming, farming. Farming can take over a year. Do not farm unless you are going to be consistent, okay? 
Farming is when you farm and you plant seeds in a neighborhood. A lot of people want to farm their own neighborhood. They're like, I want to farm my neighborhood. I love my neighbors, right? Some people don't want to farm their neighborhood because they're like, I don't want all my neighbors up in my business. <laughs> they're like, every time I leave the house, I don't want to say hi to my neighbors. I just want to come home in peace, okay? So I'm going to give you a farming, uh, farming on a budget. And what he says is he says to pick 15 farms, okay? And go through all the farms and then figure out which one has the highest um, the highest turnover rate and pick two to three farms, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna meet with your title rep. If you don't have a title rep, you guys with EXP, you guys can go to your state groups, search title, okay? And then from there, you are going to talk, get, get with your title rep and ask them, how can you help me farm? Title reps can help you pull data for the mark for the farm. Like let's say there's 1,500 homes. They can pull the data on names and phone numbers and addresses and labels and help you upload them, right? Create marketing packets, all of that. Your title reps can do a lot for you, okay? You need to develop relationships with your title reps, okay? What title reps are also good for you guys is when you get a listing, because you guys are all new, so I'm going to tell you. When you get a listing, you can call the title rep to get the, the title, right? To get the preliminary title. And the thing is, especially if you're dealing like a husband and wife, or you're dealing with a um, like kids that actually have elderly parents, the thing is, you can't list that house, one, unless everybody signs, you need to know who's on the title. But what you also can find on the title is if there's any tax liens, okay? Because you can ask them how much equity you have in your home, what kind of loan do you have? You know, how much do you owe? And some people don't realize they have tax liens, they have mechanic liens, right? They have um, property liens, right? So the title, you guys want, when you get that title, you wanna learn how to read the title, okay? Maybe they have permitting issues, those kinds of things, okay? So I wanna meet your title rep, okay? So pick your farm. The farm should be 5% um, turnover or more. Okay, I'll give you the formula for that. And if you really want to farm, the thing is farming is a long game, okay? Farming, you can do it uh, at sweat equity, so you can do it with your money. But if you pick a farm that's like between 600 and 1,000 homes, you could probably farm it with um, postcards or some sort of newsletter for two to $300 a month, okay? Um, but if you're new to the farm, you really should try to walk the farm the first time. Okay. Um, otherwise, you can walk the farm. You can hand out postcards. You can hand out uh, um, uh, market updates, right? You can take the Keeping Current Matters articles and hand them out. You can print the EXP newsletters. We have so many things for you guys. Okay. And listen, if you don't want to farm it, you can find people to pay them and say, I want you to drop these flyers off in this entire farm. But I'm telling you, when you farm a neighborhood, People are a lot nicer than you think they'll be, okay? The next one is I want you to develop the plan, okay? So you met with the rep, you picked the farm, you need to develop the plan. What is my plan, okay? Am I gonna walk it? Am I gonna um, mail to it? Am I gonna create groups uh, in Facebook? Am I, like, let's just say the master plan communities, La Costa Gardens, right? Am I gonna see if there is a La Costa Gardens Facebook group? If not, I'm gonna create a Facebook group and I'm gonna get every all the businesses and all the all the the um, uh, homeowners to collaborate in there. Most uh, communities already have some sort of Facebook group, okay? But here's the trick: just because they have a Facebook group doesn't mean it's being maintained, okay? A lot of realtors are getting out of the business, and here's the thing: I heard a statistic today: thirty percent of the realtors get out of the business every year. But guess what? 30% of the realtors are new every year, okay? So when you think, oh, farming, oops, sorry. Can you guys still hear me? Mm -hmm. I have some really small ears and I wish I could say that about my feet. Um, so my point is, <laughs> is <laughs> my point is, is, Nobody's doing print marketing anymore, especially with like social media and stuff like that. There is a huge opportunity for you to create a farm and to own it. I have um, a former coaching client. Her name's Sarah McKinney. She started farming 
in a farm where a woman had been there maybe 10 years and she thought, man, I'm not going to be able to get in this farm. Well, guess what? That woman did not have a really good reputation, but she was the only one that people knew. And now Sarah gave them another choice. And then the people that created all of the events ended up calling Sarah and said, you know what? We'd rather have you do the Easter event this year. We'd have rather have you do the back to school event. And she just swiped that farm from the other person. Okay. Because one thing that she does is she sends out just listeds for just listeds. She sends out postcards. She sends out market updates. She puts everybody in HomeBot. She goes into the Facebook group that she did not create, okay? This Facebook group actually was, I think, created by this other realtor. You gotta be careful because a lot of these Facebook groups realtors create and they won't let you in, right? So you gotta figure out um, what that's like. And you also have to know the rules Every time you go in there, you can only post something business-like once a week, okay? But what you want to do there is you want to go in there and create value, right? Be funny, um, support people, send people business, um, send them referrals, invite them to back-to-school things, right? If you really want to farm, you have to be want to get into relationship with people, okay? So right there, get into the neighborhood groups, share your listings in there, share Keeping Current Matters articles share funny things, neighborhood watch things, like let people see your name, okay? The next one's you gotta execute, okay? Some of you on this call, we've been talking and I know so many people are like, I'm gonna farm, I'm gonna farm, I'm gonna farm, I'm gonna farm. And because it's not done, they won't do it. Listen, done is better than perfect, okay? Done is better than perfect, all right? So if you go to Farming on a Budget, he'll show you how to make, make uh, flyers, right? Just do it. Do it scared, order the material. Maybe you don't wanna do flyers, just go out and pass your card out, right? You can also farm by um, door knocking a, a just listed or door knocking an open house or, or just sold, okay? So farming, all right? The next one is those and expired, okay? Farming, oh, farming can take a year. Uh, well, that I should have changed, okay? Bizbos and expired, okay? I want you to watch the training that I have. Again, they're going to, Jim and Johnny are gonna talk about, you gotta work with the motivated. Bizbos are literally raising their hands and expired saying, I want to sell, okay? And I need somebody to help me, okay? Learn the scripts. Jim Gray's scripts are really good, okay? Get the service. You can get the service for the, for the Fizbo's. Okay, that'll give you the phone numbers, or you can get the MLS. Okay, a lot of Fizbos will um, advertise on like Craigslist. Okay, and I don't know if they can advertise them on like Realtor.com and stuff. I'm not sure about that. But what I do know is you can go into your MLS and you can pull up all the expireds. So here's your homework every single one of you needs to pull up all the expireds in the last eight months. Okay, pull up the expireds in the last month and yeah, old expires or gold mines, okay? Because a lot of people are expired and they're just kind of waiting for the right time. And right now, the buying and selling season, okay? So, this goes not expired. There are services that will give you the phone numbers, but guess what? You have to be a call warrior. You have to know how to handle rejection. You have to know how to be on the call on the phone like for hours at a time and following up. People are gonna hang up on you. You're gonna have wrong phone numbers, okay? So this is what a lot of people aren't doing. They're not doing marketing packets, okay? I have a 20 year old in this, in this program, okay? His name is Justin and he's actually 20 years old, brand new agent and got three expired from agents that have been in the business for a long time. Guess how? He walked up to their door, he looked professional, walked up to their door, introduced himself, okay? And what he also did is he had a packet. He had a marketing packet, okay? And the packet was not 25 pages long. I think his packet's like 10 pages long with his phone, his picture on it, and his strategy to market the house, okay? Listen, you guys, you only have one chance to make a great first impression. <laughs> typo <laughs> okay you only have one chance to make a great first impression okay so your homework is i want you guys to create listing packets okay have a couple listing packets ready to go and anytime you see a fizzbo you should be knocking on the door 
asking for a tour because they will they will entertain your buyers, right? And then you should also ask them, hey, would you be open to me doing a free open house for you? Because if we do a free open house, I get to advertise for you, I get to put all my signs out, you still keep your listing and I bring the buyer. Would you be open to that? No strings attached, we don't even need a contract, okay? So that's a great way to get um, this post, okay? So, all right, open houses, okay? We've talked about this a lot and open houses can also take a year. <laughs> Things are just missed sometimes, right? So that had to do with farming, okay? So open houses is one of the best ways to launch your career, okay? The thing is, you need to know how to hold an open house. I've heard people lately say, I have an open house. Awesome. How many signs did you put out? One. Okay, great. I didn't get any leads. Did you door knock it? No. What else did you do? Did you advertise it? No. Listen, you guys. In a low inventory market, open houses is a huge gold mine for you, okay? The minute you get that open house, you should start blasting it out there. You should like uh, not just do it once, right? You should, just like me, you guys, I'm constantly reminding you about these classes, right? You should, you should be putting it on Facebook. Hey, I got an open house. Who knows? This is the neighborhood. And when you do an open house, you don't want to just put the address. You want to let people know this is in this part of town. Come, come visit me. Or who do you know, right? When you're doing an open house, you should be doing videos. You should be doing lives. You should be doing all those things to maximize, okay? But when you do open houses, you should be advertising it as early as possible, definitely by Thursday, even if you could do it Wednesday, right? You should be you should be putting a Facebook um, event out there. You should be putting it on your Facebook. You can put it on Craigslist. Craigslist is still a really great place to get leads, believe it or not, okay? So the other thing is, how do I find open houses? One of the best ways to find open houses, if you don't have a listing, is to prospect agents for open houses. Okay, there's two ways to prospect agents for open houses. One is every new listing, you should text them and say, congratulations on your new listing at 123 Main Street. Um, good luck with it. By the way, I'm EXP and I can help you with open houses Thursday, Friday or Saturday or any day of the week if you need help. P.S. I have my own signs. If you're looking for open houses and you have your own signs, you're actually probably going to get that opportunity over the 20,000 agents that want to hold open houses. Because when you hold open houses for other agents, they probably have other listings. They probably have only a certain number of signs and they don't have the time to run back and forth to give you the signs, to get them back. To, you know what I mean? Like you've got to make the listing agent's job easy. Okay, so with this strategy, you should be looking at your MLS every week, really, to see what the market's doing, every Monday, every Tuesday, okay. right? And then text them right away. All you gotta do is save this template in a file and text it and also text a photo of yourself or a business card, okay? You want to stand out every week, this weekly strategy. Congratulations on your listing on 123 Main Street. Um, I'm an EXP agent. You need help with the open houses. I can help hold the houses open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or any time that you need, whatever your schedule is, right? P.S. I have my own signs if that's helpful, okay? The second way to find open houses is to go into your workplace group. You guys, we have 88,000 agents. At the end of the year, we are going to have a 100,000 agents. What does that mean? We are gonna take over market share. It means EXP is gonna have more listings than any other company. And right now, if you're not following Inman and if you're not following the statistics, we are one of the number one agencies, not only in recruiting and growth, but in volume and size, homes sold. What that means is there's gonna be more opportunity at this company to leverage other agents' listings and business for you to get business, okay? Got that? All right, so the, the third way, maybe this is the second way, is you should be reaching out to icon agents and icon teams, okay? One, you should go into your state group, which has thousands of agents, okay? And what you should put is attention, Dallas-Fort Worth, because it's a state, right? They need to know where you're looking for. Attention, Houston, attention, 
San Diego. Um, I'm available for open houses any day of the week and I have my own signs, right? And I would put a photo or I would put a gif, right? Or a gif, whatever you say, it, that says open, I'm available for open houses. Who needs help with open houses, okay? So one, you're gonna text the agents for the, for the new listings for the strategy. Two, you're gonna reach out to, you're gonna post in your state groups weekly and a couple times a week. Three, you're actually gonna reach out to icon agents and icon teams. So if you go into workplace and you put icon, okay, and you put Dallas and then search and do people, do search and hit people or icon San Diego, search and hit people. All the icon agents are gonna come up and my best suggestion for you is put every one of those icon agents and also do that with teams. Team San Diego, teams, you guys have to play with the words, okay? I put every one of these people in a spreadsheet and put their phone numbers there. And every single week, if you don't have enough business, text every single one of those. Hey, happy Monday. I'm available for open houses. But if you do a group text, you can send 20 texts at a time. Here's the thing. Just take group texts off and you send one text to 20 people every single week. That strategy. Okay. So are you guys feeling this? All right, there's so you guys got to prospect for new business in of uh, in lots of different ways. Okay, prospect agents with new listings, prospect icon teams, okay, and icon agents for for opportunities throughout the week, and then post in the state groups. Okay, signs. If you can't afford signs right now, start sacrificing Starbucks or Netflix or fishing <laughs> or whatever it is. Right to buy signs, you guys. You should buy at least 10 signs. You should buy open house signs and you gotta at least get one listing sign. You wanna get a listing, you gotta be ready for a listing, okay? So what I want you to do is advertise um, your open houses on Facebook, advertise them on Craigslist, put them on social. Um, even if you go and ask to, to do a preview, you can say, hey, can I preview the property before I actually hold it open this week? Schedule a showing and do like a pre-showing with your face with your Facebook Live. Okay, put out lots and lots of signs, you guys. Okay, not just two, not just three. Put out lots of signs. Mary Tam Addington has a really great um, uh, training on that. Okay, the last one is door knocking. Okay, so um, that should have been fifty homes. <laughs> Uh, this is what happens when your internet sucks is like it's not updating everything right okay so the last one is door knocking all right when you door knock look you guys have a reason to door knock and it's low inventory people are wanting to know what's happening with my equity okay what's happening with my value and then they also are friends are waiting to move into the neighborhoods okay so what you need to do is go door knock it like on thursday when people are coming home or Saturday morning, if you're having the open house later, and all you have to do is knock and say, hey, my name's Tanya, and have your market statistics, okay? Have the just listed, just sold, the aspired for that area, because they're gonna go, oh, what's that house down there? Not the one you're listing, you gotta go, oh, you know what, let me look, right? And why do you ask? You gotta knock on the door and say, hey, my name's Tanya, I just wanna introduce myself. We just um, are listing your neighbor's house. We just put it up on the market for 550,000. We have an open house this weekend for two days. And I know neighbors like to pick their neighbors, okay? Um, who do you know who wants to move into this neighborhood, okay? And then you ask an open-ended question. And how about you? When do you plan on moving, okay? So there's a magic number. Like you definitely should do all the ones on each side that are near the house. Okay, if you're afraid to door knock and you need your husband to go with you or you need your friend to go with you or you have another agent that's accountability partner, they can knock one side, you can knock the other so you can see each other, right? Keep each other accountable, right? Get the map and go, you know what? Today I have an hour and a half to door knock or two hours. I'm going to do these three streets. Okay, and then tomorrow I'm going to do these three, three streets. You guys got to door knock. People are so much more friendly than you think they are. Okay, is this helpful, you guys? Mm -hmm. perfect okay so here is one that we really haven't talked about much okay this is empty nesters okay empty nesters are people that their children have left the home they want to downsize they want to travel and sometimes they're getting a divorce 
right? At this point, empty nesters are like, I've been looking at your face for 17 years. We haven't been getting along. <laughs> Just waiting for kids to get out and, and, and like, you go your way, I go my way, <laughs> right? Unfortunately, right? But empty nesters account for a large chunk of the real estate market. Collectively, those aged 55 to 64 comprise of 40% of the home buyers and sellers. Those aged 65 to 73 make up 31%, according to the often empty net, according, according to uh, National Association of Realtors, right? Empty nesters decide to move a lot. Okay, so this says that, um, this says that uh, empty nesters are 55 to 64. I was an empty nester at 47 years old, okay? I had kids at 24, and so make sure you go a little bit younger, okay? <laughs> and just, here's the thing, you guys, 40 plus 30, okay? That's 71% of the buyers, okay, are empty nesters or seniors. Where do you think you should be spending your time, you guys? Empty nesters, seniors, and pregnant women. Okay, <laughs> because pregnant women are looking to build a new life, like they need a new room, they are going on for their fairy tale. Okay, so the thing is, is you can focus on 50, 50 and plus communities, right? 50 plus communities, 55 and up. Okay, I think it's 55 and up now. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're not going to want to, how do you find empty investors, right? Farming them, either sweat equity, walking, or mailing to them. Um, a lot of people empty, and that are empty nesters have larger uh, homes, right? They're in master plan communities, the communities where you have water slides and pools and daycares and dog parks and all those things for convenience, okay? Well, when you become my age, I'm going to be 49 this year. I love kids. Well, let me tell you, even if my house was small, I'd be like, I'm out, right? I will come back and I'll visit you guys. I love you guys, but I want to like take my equity out and do something else. Or I want to buy, I want to take the equity out of this large house to buy my college child that just moved out a home in their college town, right? So empty nesters are so many opportunities to have the buy, the sell, and the investment, okay? The buy, the sell, the end, the investment. And some empty nesters even have parents that they need to help sell their houses too. Because look at that. If they're 55 to 64, they're also probably a senior parent, right? Are you guys feeling me? Do empty nesters seem like a great place to work? Okay, perfect. So empty nesters usually have like, um, you know, four bedroom homes. Their homes are usually like, 22 to 2500 and up you know like the 3000 square foot houses the 4000 square foot houses so when you're meeting with your title rep okay say hey i would like to find homes with four bedrooms that are like 3000 square foot and up right a lot of those people are like you know what this house is way too big and nobody's in it right so master plan communities okay the other place that you can find empty nesters is almost all Close to 90% of them are on Facebook and nearly 60% of them use Twitter, okay? So a lot of people think that empty nesters like my age and between 55 and 64 are not on social media. Listen, who's sharing all the graduations, okay? Who's bragging about who all the graduations? Who's bragging about all the proms? Who's bragging about who got into the Ivy League schools? The thing about empty nesters is, I can vouch for this, right? We basically lose a purpose. A little bit right so we're like oh my god everybody's moving out and i gotta i gotta like i'm proud of my kids and i'm gonna brag about them and i want to support them okay so then they're also bragging about their grandkids okay so they their new purpose is i just want to share all the good things that you know are in my life with other people okay so facebook right so get on facebook and anybody that's in that empty nester category right like hey happy birthday send them a facebook message send them a facebook video send them a gif a gif whatever you call it this just shows my whole empty nester is it gif or gif <laughs> okay ah <laughs> oh, brianna the fact that you don't even know what it is i feel like it makes me feel a lot better okay so schools okay get active in the schools get active in the high schools get active in the elementary schools because they probably have older kids right build relationships do pop buys and marketing just so you know when i farmed our neighborhood okay there are a lot of empty nesters over there what we did is we farmed it 
but we also brought Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny to them, okay? What we did is we actually got an open, an open trailer, right? That was open with sides on it. And we um, put grass in it and we got Easter Bunny costumes and we got Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus costumes. And instead of them having to go to the mall, malls are closing down, you know, you guys, malls are closing down. So instead of going to the mall, instead of going to the park and waiting in line, you bring the Easter Bunny and you bring Santa Claus to them, right? The thing is, it costs 100 bucks or $150 to get a Santa costume, $100 to get an Easter Bunny costume. People love that and no realtors are doing. That's for my license again, and I'm going to do that again. People loved it. And guess what? You don't have to, have to have to hire a photographer. Everybody has really beautiful phones. They just get their own phones, and they just snap their pictures, and you give them your card, and you give them your swag. They're on their way, okay? So get involved, all right? School drives. A lot of the empty nesters also like when people are giving back to their community, okay? So the last one is execute, right? Focus on how many people you're going to talk to. What events are you going to do to get in front of empty nesters? Maybe you start doing empty nester videos, right? Empty nester videos on TikTok or on YouTube or on Instagram, right? Maybe you sit down and go, you know what? I'm going to make one video and it's the five most frequent or the 10 most frequently asked empty nester questions, okay? You take that video, you slap it on YouTube, and then you chop it up into all the different sections. One, two, that's like that one video is now 12 videos, right? So the thing is, empty nesters are out there researching, trying to figure out where they're gonna go. They're looking at vacation homes, they're looking at, at rentals, okay? So empty nesters, okay? So the next one here is, this is for people PCS, and this is for people in military towns, military families getting stationed in and out of the base. This is a, who here is in a military town? Anybody? Okay. Martha, you're in a military town too? I did not know this, okay? So on Facebook, they have groups, okay? So get into the Facebook groups. They have PCSing groups, right? And they're gonna be called PCSing groups. If you actually look at a lot of the brands in the military towns, they have like PCS Colorado, you know, PCS whatever, Texas, PCS in blah, 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 or Colorado PCS, and they have moving trucks and all those kinds of things, okay? There are tons of Facebook groups, okay? So get active in the Facebook groups, share new listings, okay? If you do videos on PCSing, you know, the 10 frequently asked PCSing questions, you can drop a video in there every week and now they're going to your YouTube channel, right? It's a really great way. You can go into those groups and say, hey guys, I'm gonna be starting um, like a walking group for you know military moms on this day. Does anyone wanna go? Hey guys, I, um, I'm coordinating, you know, my daughter and her friends do a babysitting. I'm coordinating a babysitting night and I'm paying them. Who needs, who needs a date night, right? Your husband's out of town, your husband's deployed. Who needs a date night? Like figure out how to serve the military community and serving the military community is not just the active duty, right? It's the spouses as well and the children, okay? So teach classes. You can get on base and you can teach first time buyer classes, right? You could teach um, motivational classes. You could teach business classes. A lot of military wives or spouses are looking for something to do. And you see a lot of them actually come in into real estate because then they can be home with their kids, cell phones, and then they can go to different bases, okay? Create videos, develop a plan, okay? If you're gonna go a PCSing route, then you wanna figure out that plan and stick with it, okay? Execute, pick one strategy and execute, okay? All right, so that is the end of that, but I wanna share with you something else, okay? Are you guys, is this helpful for you guys at all? Okay. All right. Good. So I'm going to share this with you. All right. So I'm going to stop my share. Okay. Oh, Brittany, I didn't see that you're, um, Brittany. So Brittany's on a PCSE market. Brittany, do you want to, um, do you want to add, uh, what they can do in PCSE markets? And by the way, Brittany's in Colorado Springs. Okay. Martha and Brianna, if you have Colorado Springs, send it to Brittany. So Brittany, what can you add to that? 
Sorry, I'm on my phone and I couldn't figure out how to unmute it. Um, so getting, being active in the military spouse groups has been really good for us. And then when we have clients who were in the military, them like being like your A clients, because if they're your A clients, whenever the new wives are coming in or spouses are coming in, they're going to recommend you in those groups. So that's how I get a lot of my referrals is definitely from the military spouse groups. So when you do have VA buyers and they are going to be PCSing, definitely put them on your A list because they're going to be your number one referrers for like most likely. And in terms of the A list, okay, tell us how you treat your A list people. Okay, because Brittany has had a team, right? And she has killed it in the military community. What do you do for A people? So A-list people, we nor we'll do, well, now me, <laughs> I'll do pop bites. So we normally do pop bites every quarter. Um, if for our A-list, we will touch them a little bit more than we will um, like the B's and C's. So we might do a more like extravagant pop by like a bigger pop by for the A clients and we'll like personally go hand deliver those ones nine times out of 10 if it's like a busy busy thing then we'll um, we'll have the like somebody go deliver them for us but our pop buys are number one for those clients love that and the, here's the thing you guys one thing i was talking about with open houses if you guys get to a point you don't like open houses right you should be getting somebody on your team to do open houses or someone to do open houses because from one open house or from one listing you should be getting two to three leads okay and especially since the inventory is so low right now right like Brittany just got a listing um a listing lead from an open house okay she didn't have a lot of traffic but she got a listing lead right well, they were my only person who walked through <laughs> exactly so you guys have to do these open houses and you have to brand yourself well okay so i want to share with you okay if you go into like lab code agents and you go into some of these um some of these groups you know i typed in listings right you're going to see a lot of negative things so try to stay away from the negative but i want to just kind of point this out to you okay um, can you guys see my page here? That's, um, better. That's better. Yeah. Okay. So he says, my cold call stats for the month of March, five new listings, 4,260 calls made, right? 40 leads pushed to my CRM, five listings. I made my best efforts to get on the phone and cold call every day for at least four hours. Okay. Four hours is a lot. Some of you only have one hour or two hours. Unfortunately, I was only able to do a total of two and a half weeks all together. And this is two and a half weeks, okay? There's a lot of money in cold calling. I'm using a few other marketing channels to bring in leads to my business. Cold calling is by far one of my favorite and my, in my opinion, the most profitable. Cold calling is by far one of my favorite and, and in my opinion, the most profitable. I love cold calling to you guys because I got burnt out trying to wine and dine my clients, going to all their baby showers and birthday parties. I just was like tacked out. What I love about cold calls is you are touching base with people and you don't have to feel like you have to give your soul or your firstborn child to your sphere of influence. Okay. And you can talk to more people. Okay. I always tell people, he says, I always tell people the list isn't as important as the connection and conversation you're having with the person on the other hand, on the other end of the phone. I hope this post helps us to all stay accountable. Okay. So I want you guys to see this. He made a lot of calls. Okay. But that's a lot of calls, right? That's five new listings, 40 leads. Okay. Out of these five new listings, he's going to get at least, you know, 10 more leads. Okay probably a couple of listings, and then he has these 40 leads, right, to follow up on. The thing is, imagine if he didn't sit here or you didn't sit here for four hours doing this, if you were just consistent four hours a week, four hours a week. A lot of you guys have leads. You guys are on Teams, and Brittany, actually every single one of you on this call has a ton of leads to call on. Calling on leads and doing prospecting is an art, okay? The best thing you have to do is just do it, do it scared, right? Get prepared, stand up, put your phone on like a timer and go, 
for the next hour and a half to two hours, I'm not going to be disturbed. I'm going to play a game with myself. I'm going to see how many dials I can get. Okay. It's how, how fast you dial, 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 dial. And the faster you dial, the more contacts you're going to get, the more leads you're going to get. Okay. So you should be tracking dials, contacts, and leads. Okay. But the thing is just like door knocking and just like any prospecting, you got to walk fast and talk fast. You got to walk fast, talk fast, dial fast. That is the key to prospecting besides knowing the scripts, knowing what to say and knowing that once knowing that every yes, I'm sorry, knowing that every no gets you one step closer to a yes. Okay. Every single no gets you one step closer to a yes. Okay. And the bottom line is rejection is going to make you money. Okay. The people that don't have the courage to tell you they're not interested. All right. The people that don't have the courage to tell you that like, oh, I'm not interested or, you know, I can't buy are the ones that are wasting you your time. You're going to actually love rejection because the re people that reject you are not, not your time suckers. They're not your time wasters. Okay. So right here, this guy said, how do I get listings or buyers right now? Right. The best $87 investments I made, 27 for the cards and 60 for real stamps. What he's saying is he basically got a bunch of cards and hand wrote all of these cards, right? And here's what he put. He even wrote in the front a real hand handwritten address, okay? This is where you should be writing cards to your sphere of influence, right? You should be, if you, if you have a farm that's in your neighborhood, write them out, right? Or pay your kid to write them out. But this is what he says, 100% open rate, right? Because it, it's a handwritten note. Who does that anymore? Okay, I'll send this to you guys. All right, so look, handwritten notes, all right? So let's look at this one as our last one. Let's talk about listings. Right now I have a ratio of about 75 to 25 buyers to sellers, okay? So 75% buyers, 25 to sellers. Second year in the business as a solo agent. I will close, this is 2022, keep that in mind. I will close. 40 by the end of quarter two, one of my production goals is to acquire more listings so that I feel comfortable handing off some buyers leads to the agents that I want to onboard, okay? How can I use my current listings to leverage more listing, okay? I didn't do all of them, but here's what this person said. How do you get your listings if you don't mind? Social media. A lot of people get their listings from social media. Brittany gets her listings from social media. She places ads. She shows open houses. She does market statistics. She's branding, right? She's constantly marketing. A lot of you guys, people would never know you're a realtor because you never post anything um, on social media for business, okay? And she says, social media is mostly organically. I've considered doing some paid ads, okay? So Facebook and Instagram, that's what they're doing, all right? So this guy here, this guy says, with low inventory, this is in 2021, almost everywhere, we're doing, what are you doing to gain new listings? The past two weeks, I've been reaching out to expired listings to see how I can assist them in getting their property sold. Remember how I told you earlier that a 20-year-old got three expired listings from seasoned agents? This is what he does, but you know what he does? He has a red envelope. It's full on red, okay? And he has a simple listing packet like this, okay? So the last thing I want to share with you guys, okay, I'm going to share this with you guys. There's no excuse for you guys not to be setting yourselves up for success, okay? There are so many tools, but the thing is, is you've got to tap into the tools. So give me two more minutes if that's okay, okay? So I'm going to go down here, all right? So I'm actually going to go here, and then I'm going to share this screen here. Okay, so this is the EXP Marketing Center. Okay, if you go here to customize marketing, okay, if you guys have not seen this, all right, we have customized marketing packages, right, for everybody. We have automated marketing packages. When I worked at Coldwell Banker, one of the reasons why I loved Coldwell Banker is because they were like a luxury brand and they had luxury marketing. You guys, does this not look luxury to you? That looks luxury. Guess what? It's free to you, okay? We have farm, farm new neighborhoods. Look at this. New, your list is waiting. You can get lists from here. I would talk your 
title rep and then also look here. We have Facebook ads, okay? We have single property websites. There was a question that said, are single property websites necessary? Yes, single property websites are great because you get leads from the single property websites, okay? You have Facebook ads to, to advertise for your open houses, okay? You have social media ads, okay? If you look at, you have door hangers, right? But this is what I wanna show you the most. Okay, this right here is golden, right? You guys, this is free to you guys, all right? So here are the presentations. If you go over here under presentations, right? Here's a listing presentation, okay? Check out this presentation. Here's your homework. Write this down, you guys. You guys need to create one of these presentations and you need to print out at least three to five. You need to be ready three to five buyer packets and three to five seller packets. Your buyer packet, you guys, probably just needs to be three to five pages long just so you have something, okay? But look, you go in here and you change the picture, okay? But here's what I wanna show you, okay? This listing presentation here is literally a script. It's a script, right? Right here, it says right here, you put this, like get to know you better, right? Answer their questions. So this talks about answering their questions. I would remove this page. Okay, the only thing is, I don't think you can remove the numbers, but there's a way that you can cover those up, okay? Then you do a quick about you page. Sorry, why does this thing keep coming up? Hold on, I gotta, gotta get rid of this thing, okay? Here's this about me page, okay? Right here, you should be about me at about EXP. EXP is the fastest 88,000 agents, the fastest growing you know, company in history, right? And then you should do a little about you, okay? And then right here, here's about my business. If you've been in the business, you guys use the we, okay? Use the we. Don't let something like this deter you from doing this, okay? You can even remove that page if you're not ready for that, but ask your mentor, right? Or ask me what you can use, right? So tell me about your house. This is a script, right? You guys could keep it like this. You could take that out though. Important questions. You guys should have already done the, why are you moving? Why do you need to move, okay? why you're the best realtor for them. You can add something there. Here, you add your signature approach, okay? This is my signature approach five-step process, okay? Here are, right here, client testimonials. You can put several here, right? I would make these maybe smaller. You could put recent sales here. I wouldn't waste my time putting recent sales here, right? Maybe some of the really awesome houses, but that's what your CMA is for, right? You can do a comparative market analysis and put it in there, okay? Um, what does a realtor mean? You know, if you want to keep that, you can keep that. But here's one thing that I really love right here, okay? Here's, well, about the organization, I would move that, all right? But I like this. This is the seller's roadmap. As soon as you're done talking to them, you can say, okay, here's what's going to happen. You've already hired me or professional. Now we just established the price. What's going to happen is we're going to start preparing your home. We're going to get the stager in. Um, the stager will probably come in two days. What I need you to do is declutter your home, clean your home, make sure you have a place for your pets, right? Um, make sure you let everybody in the house know that you know, realtors are coming in, we're going to list your home, okay, and what's going to happen is we're going to list it, and we're going to list it at the price that we, that you decided, that we came up with, right, but what I'm going to do is in seven to ten days, I'm going to get back to you, and I'm going to let you what's, know what's happening with the market. Hopefully, we'll have an offer by then, but if not, the price, the market is going to dictate what your home is worth, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about how we need to reposition your house if we don't have the offers that we need then, okay? In this market, I'm expecting multiple offers, just so you know. If we get multiple offers, what we'll do is we'll put them all together, and we will try to um, go through the offers on their own, okay? Then we're going to go, then we'll be under contract. Hopefully, it will be a 30 or 45 days. That's when they're going to come in. They're going to do the inspection, right? They're going to do all that. They're going to remove all their in inspection contingency, their loan contingency. And then um, we're going to be moving forward. And by here, final details will be closer to closing, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So this is really good, right? And then here's talks about the price derivative, okay, marketing channel. So I'm just showing you guys this right? But you have so many awesome things here to use for advertising, okay? So what was your takeaway? I want to know all your takeaways, and then I'll let you guys go, okay? Brittany, what was your takeaway today? I, I really like the empty nester idea, because I've been seeing a lot of those. Um, and I did have a couple tips for... Um, 
open houses, if you don't have a lot of money, you don't have to spend a lot of money. They have um, packages of open house signs there and they're pretty, I've bought a few um, recently and they're pretty good quality and you can get like 20 signs for like 50 bucks or 40 bucks. Um, so that is a really good place to start. So you don't necessarily have to spend a crap ton of money to get started. Where do you with get those. them on Amazon or where'd you get them? I got them on Amazon. Wow. Um, okay. So that's, yes, that's She's a good one. That. And <laughs> I know I was going to buy like the personalized ones and I was like, I don't want to spend this much money. So <laughs> it's expensive. I, yes, it is. And it's in the more signs, the better, like, I mean, put a couple, you know, don't just stick one. Like we always would do like three or, you know, so you have like make a lot of attention to it and just get some balloons and they don't have to be have helium in them just tie some balloons on there and the wind will make them blow a little bit um and then the other tip i had was for farming you a lot of people will think they have to buy the neighborhood list and you don't necessarily have to if you do call a title rep they can and they will give you neighborhood lists for free so you can kind of butter them up and then they'll give you those lists for free so you don't have to spend a ton of money on those Yes. And some lenders can still help you with your open houses, right? You can do like a Google open house ideas. Some people do champagne and, and uh, strawberry open house, like a twilight happy hour open houses. Some people would be like Friday pop pizza, pizza parties, right? Pop by after work and get some pizza. You know, lenders will sometimes co-market with you or they'll provide the food for you. But the thing is, is I had somebody do an open house and she's probably spent $150 from Costco. That was not you, Brianna, was it? Was it you, Brianna? Not me. <laughs> okay. Because they're like, I spent all this money. I'm like, oh my gosh, no, you don't want to do that, right? That could be like for a broker's open house, right? You don't need to be spending all that money. You want people to come in and when they grab food, then they're sitting there talking to you, right? And you want to kind of get them to hang out a little bit um so um okay so empty nester you like the empty nester carmela what was your takeaway i, I like all uh there's certain uh, there's certain of them that not, doesn't make me feel comfortable uh, because of my personality but uh but most of them i do like i've, I've been looking at farming uh for maybe a week and uh um, I, I'm going that way. I'm, I'm going that way. So I, I've got some cards uh, that I want you to look at them. Uh, okay. uh, I made. I might probably do uh, three or four niches with okay. with cards. Okay. Um, and um, I might go. I might go that route. So I got some. Like I said, I got some cards. I want you to look at them and tell me. You know, how can I would love that. It? Well, I have before, before you send them to me, I have four of, I sent you farming with a budget, but I found four really good trainings. Mm -hmm. So I'll send you all the trainings and like pull it all together. Yes. Okay? Let me have all the training. Uh, I already have a, a, um, a subscription, um, which, which I'm, I'm, I'm giving it a try. It's called mail, uh, mailbox power. Yep. Uh, Brittany uses uh, that. Yeah, so um, the, the, you can also buy a list there. It's it's a list that you can actually uh, get at Target to what you want to do. They're yeah. ten cents per lead, so it's. it's I think. Not... I mean, I think it's good that you get a list, but you need to meet with your title rep first. I'm sorry. Because the title rep, you should meet with your title rep first because most likely you don't need to buy a list. And yes, if they have it's... all that for you. They can mm -hmm. help you upload it. They can format it. All those things. Yes. Uh, so that's an extra stuff that I can do. But, love uh, it. I love it. But, you know, I'm, I'm going that route. You can, um, I can do the, um, I was also taking a training from KB Core about how to do virtual uh, open house. So I took that training. It's great. So when you said FISBO open house, I said, wow, wouldn't that be a good, um, a good added value to a FISBO? And just kind of listen, I'm not here to list. I'm here just to get your buyer. And if I get your buyer, uh, let's work at uh, three percent to uh, two point five percent commission on, on a buyer that I bring to you, uh, and let me do it either virtual by the training that I just got. I can do it virtual, and at the same time, I can um, do some uh, strategy to to have some uh, traffic to the house. Yeah, you can do um, it virtual. Can you send me that training? I've actually been looking for that training. It's, it's in KB Core. Yes. Oh, okay. It's in yeah. KB Core. Okay, it's, I'll it's look a, for it. 
It's in KB Core. Uh, it's in, um, I think it's in the market, it's marketing side. Uh, okay. We actually can go to training. It's, it's there. Um, okay. It's very good. It, it tells you how to build the uh, the event in Facebook. Yeah. How to uh, connect all those pages to KB Core. Um, how to uh, get organic traffic and pay traffic. And when by the day that they even teach you, you know, once you there, just pretty much hitting that click and, and getting that. Uh, um, well, well, that's the thing, you guys. If you have KB Core, you know. That is the other power of being with a company like this with 88,000 agents. You get to share other people's listings, okay? And the thing is, yes, you have to get permission, right? But most agents are like, fine, go ahead. Like my job is to get this listing sold, right? And some agents will say no, and if not, then just move on to the next agent. I mean, move on to the next thing, okay? But the fact that you guys can share other people's listings and even advertise and do Facebook ads around other people's listings, that is huge. Superpower of collaboration. All right, Martha, what was your takeaway? Um, I liked your farming. I, I really have wanted to farm. I just got some packets of seed. I was gonna make some seed paper and just mail them out and okay. just tell them who I am. I was waiting for my business cards to come in and they just got here today. So I'm ready Perfect. to go. Perfect. I will send you. So before you guys farm, please watch two or three of these trainings only because farming can cost a lot of money, right? It's a huge strategy. I don't want you guys to go out and, and, and execute um, on a strategy that's not going to work. Okay. So we have the strategy and be consistent. And okay, you'll, send the, you'll send the yep. farming. Yep. As soon as I'm done, I'll actually put the farming on about, I'll, I'll put all five um, trainings yes, and I'll send them out to you guys. And then if you're watching this, if you're watching this on a video, it doesn't matter if you're with EXP or not, send me a message. Let's hop on a call and I'll give you the training. We need everybody to win. We need more listing. <laughs> Brianna, what was your takeaway? My takeaway was the homework um, to go in and do the listing presentation and print it out and have several of them because I have my files. Um, and then go to expireds and listing uh, that way. Give them the script that's already part of the packet and have it ready before you get there. I think that would be helpful because I feel like I would, like I kind of lose like my whole thing. And if it's there, they have the packet. And then if they say no, then you go, hey, I can do an open house for you. So like you have a backup. That's like really helping. Cause, like, Let me tell you guys what I would do. I literally would walk with a, a, a sorry, a note, not a notepad, like a hard, what, are, what am I thinking of? The binder, you know, you put it on the binder. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, binder. Three, uh, not a binder, but I would have the scripts with me, right? On a pad, okay? I would have a buyer script and I'd have a seller script, okay? And when I was talking to a seller, I would ask them on the phone, like what it was. And then when I would walk into their home for like a listing presentation, I would, even if I'd already asked them the questions, I'd be looking at it and I'd be writing it. Okay, yeah, so tell me, okay, last time we talked, you said you wanted to move, you know, by June. Okay, yeah, and you needed to get 100,000 out of your house. Yeah, okay, and you owe this much. Yeah, and, and you wanted to move here by then, right? Okay, and then, and you, you talk about wanting to get this price, right? They don't care if you read it from something. It's a conversation. You guys don't have to know everything, okay? You just should have in your car, you guys, you should have a clipboard. <laughs> That's the word. That's the word. You should, have a, you should have the clipboard. That's the word I was looking for. You should have a clipboard with scripts on it. So when someone calls, like put it in between your car, right? Put it in the, in, in the seat, in between the seat. And every time someone calls, you should write on that clip clipboard. I put stuff just right in the KV core into my phone. And if you don't put it right in the KV core in your phone, guess what you can do? Everything you wrote on that clipboard, you could take a photo and you could drop the photo in KV core. Bam. Okay. This guy figure out how to use technology, um, but also use paper because lots of realtors use paper. Okay. Can I so, get those scripts? Cause you said to text you uh, for the scripts. Cause I have some from Jim Gray, but I feel like it's not, it's like one page. I don't know. I need the sellers and the buyers. The, like I have expired scripts. I have those scripts. 
work. I have all the Tom Ferry scripts. I'll send you all the scripts. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Got script yeah. workbooks. Like, let's see. Let me show you guys. This is what I have here. Um, all the workbooks. So if you need one of these workbooks, you just have to say, Tanya, this is what I need. Okay. So hold on. Hold on. Where are they? Uh, workbooks. Uh, here we go. Ready? Can you see my page? Nope. Right here. Okay. I got a buyer playbook. I got an outbound leads playbook. I got a seller playbook. I have the right listing process playbook. I have a real estate script playbook. I have a social media playbook. I have a workbook. Okay. I got all these. And then I have a couple of other scribe workbooks, script playbook. Yeah. I got, I got them for you guys. How do we get to that page? Um, I'll send these to you. If you guys need a 30, 60, 90 plan, I can go over that with you. I sent you guys the gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the one thing I'm also going to send you that I got today from a friend was the top 50 list of spreadsheet. Here's your top 50. Here's all your touches. Here's your top referrals. And here's what you do for them. Okay. So I got a lot for you guys too. Okay. Perfect. You guys, we got lots of things, but you know what you guys have is me as your coach. So you guys got to keep showing up, show up every week. Call me when you're feeling down, discouraged, frustrated, wanting to get out of the business. Thinking that another business, thinking another brokerage is going to be better for you because it's not the brokerage, you guys. Right now, I know it's not the brokerage, right? It's the people, right? So you guys got to show up a little bit more right now. It get more engaged, okay? All right, rap just came on because this place turns into a bar at night. <laughs> it's a coffee shop that turns into oh. a bar. Can you hear it? Mm -hmm. Oh wow, this, these things work then. All right, you guys, I appreciate you guys. Um, pass this on. If you know of anyone that needs new listings, needs more listings anywhere in the country, say, hey, I got a listing class that, that um, I'd love to share with you. Guess what that does? Everybody needs new listings. It gets people to think of you with EXP, start asking questions, and potentially you guys will get rev share. Okay? Okay. All right, guys. Okay, have a good day, and then I'll download this. All right, bye. Bye. Thank you. Welcome.